Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the Scripture Cathedral. Again, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, make sure, those that are already on, make sure you uh, share this so that you can have um, some of your friends, uh, some of your so-called Facebook friends to join in. Um, tonight, we're going to have an interesting discussion. I think it's going to help uh, a lot of us that are Christians. It's going to help us out uh, to get through some of the things that we're going through even before uh, this coronavirus, this pandemic. Some of us were going through certain things, but I believe this uh, will help us. Um, so tonight, I'm going to give you a chance to share for some other people to get in. And while you're doing that, let me introduce my panel. Uh, to my right is Minister Saudi Williams. Uh, next to, to me is First Lady Doretha Long. And to my left is Minister Sean Townsend. Uh, and next to him is Minister Michael Shaw. And on the, the end over there is Elder Matthew Johnson. Um, so we're going to get started tonight. Uh, well, let me ask this. How are you guys doing tonight? So doing good. So All good. right. All right. Um, is anybody ready to go back to church? Yes, <laughs> sir. Definitely. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, we got some, some, you, you ever got some news and you got happy and then they came back and pulled, there you go, <laughs> pulled the rug from under you. Um, I, 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 let me say this before I start. When, when we do go back, the Scripture Cathedral, we will take precautions. We have to take precautions. Um, so I want you to keep that in mind. So if you see certain things that we are following, guidelines we're following by the CDC or um, whomever, our health departments, we will follow those guidelines. Uh, so it might be first come, first serve. So don't get mad if you're turned away. If service starts at 11 and you get here at 11.01 <laughs> and you get turned away, don't get upset. Um, but I, I know uh, that everything is going to work all okay because um, God needs to uh, get us back together so we can accomplish what he has for us to do. Uh, tonight... I want, first of all, let me see, uh, Minister Townsend, can you read uh, Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and let's read the 10th through the 18th verse. Yes. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, uh, many of us, we've heard it all of our church lives. It is a important scripture for those that are believers and Christians. And we must follow this scripture very closely. Tonight, let's talk about uh, the devices of Satan. What are you talking about, Pastor? What Satan uses to, to turn people around. What he uses to, to trick us. The, 
the, what, what are wiles? W-I-L-E-S. In this scripture, it is referring to the tricks, devices uh, that fool, trap, and entice one used by Satan. So let me ask the question before I go further to someone on the panel. Um, my question is, can a saint be fooled? Yes. Are you sure? Once you're saved, don't you have the wherewithal to fight that off? Or you have to keep studying, keeping the word of God? So, so, so you're saying a saint can be fooled. Give me some ways a saint can be fooled. Evil communication. Hmm. That's, that's one of the main reasons. That's one of the main ways that Satan is going to, if he's going to get any of us, He's going to do it through communication, especially it'll be the same, his same principles that he used in the garden. Same, same scheme. And he's using it all the time, trying to get us to change our mind about what God said about what he's going to do. Okay. Make us take another direction. I believe that um, once you've been uh, in, in Christ for a while, some of his devices he may not be able to use, you know, you've seen it, you've learned from it um, when it comes to things. So, and I think that's why Paul um, said, you did run well, who did hinder you? A lot of times, um, like the enemy will use those who are closest to us. Mm -hmm. He'll use friends, uh, he'll use family. If you're in leadership, he'll use subordinates. Um, he, he'll even use leadership. Um, to, to trip you up or attempt to trip you up. And then sometimes he just, uh, he'll just attack you straight up. Um, he, he'll just come straight at you. Doesn't, he doesn't have to necessarily go through anybody um, that is close to you. Mm -hmm. It could be somebody on the outside and they'll just go at you. And the, the person that comes to mind is Daniel when he was in Babylon. There were presidents, they called them presidents, um, mm -hmm. that wanted to attack Daniel, but because he was an upright man, um, they had to use, watch this, uh, his own religious beliefs to take him out. That's the only way that they could get to him. Um, so, I mean, it's a variety of ways that you can be tricked. And, and it takes time to uh, develop the, the skills and the wherewithal, like you said, to be able to fight those things off. So when we look at verse number 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let me pause right here to inform you that Satan can also use his influence to get into people to do his dirty work. People, you know, when we think about that, they all spiritual wickedness and, and all this. And, 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 but he can use people to get his work done, what he wants to, to, to do, how he wants to turn a person around. He can get into a person and allow them to do it. Um, I, was, I was reading earlier the difference between principalities and the powers. Uh, principalities are the highest of high in the demon world, the highest of high. Um, and the powers are right under them. And then you got your, your rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual weakness. Those are the demons. So there are ranks in the demon world. And uh, the demons are the ones that try to get into people to carry out the work. So as Christians, we must be careful I believe wholeheartedly in spirits. I believe you have good spirits and I believe you have evil spirits. And when you're in church, I just believe, maybe I'm wrong, but I believe there are more evil spirits that are lurking in the church than good spirits. Let me give you an example. I was taught at hospitals certain Demons and stuff hang around hospitals. Even though the hospitals are doing good work, the demons are there trying to infiltrate. 
Same thing with the church. We're here trying to do a good work, so the demons try to come here. And you said it. They used his own religion against him. We have people right in the church. I don't know why I'm going this way, but we have people that's right in the congregation that will try to use your, your, your faith against you. There's a difference between faith and common sense. I think I preached something not too long ago. 99% of what is common sense, God allows us to have that. 99% is common sense. That 1% can kill you. Listen, do you know what the number one trick of the devil is? I know you've heard this before. Is what now? Ignorance. No. Fear. No. The number one trick is to make you believe that he doesn't exist. <laughs> now, you know what I would put as 1A? He don't want you to believe that God exists. Mm -hmm. That's true. So, therefore, if I don't believe the devil exists, I can, I can subject to do anything. If I don't believe God exists, I'm subject to do anything. And you have... Church folks, see, everything we've been talking about, I'm going to say it again. We're talking about church folk, believers, mm -hmm. Christians. Mm -hmm. You have those that are believers that don't fully believe in what they're in. Mm -hmm. Some of us, a lot of us are only here because of mama and daddy mm -hmm. or a family member. Relationship. Relationship. Oh, come to my church. Okay, you come. See, I, I, let me go. I never forget. I never forget. I never forget. Uh, there was a minister at our church, and he and his wife invited a young lady to come. The young lady came to Scripture Cathedral, and she got involved in ministry. She joined Scripture Cathedral. So when this minister wanted to, to go out on his own, he had the audacity to, the, or, or his wife had the audacity to say the bishop, well, bishop, we brought her in, so she should be able to go with us. Mm. My Lord. Something is wrong with people's minds. Yes, sir. And pastor, I think at that point when they said we're not ignorant of Satan's devices, devices particularly is, is more than just a mechanical thing, like mm -hmm. a device is also defined as an argument. Mm -hmm. It's a different argument. So our battle, as we go through this scripture, we're going to see like all of our defenses are protecting us from receiving or falling victim to a different argument. Like when he said to the book, of, um, when he said to the people of Galatians, like you, 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 you followed another gospel. Mm -hmm. There's another argument that you believed other than what God originally taught you and the subtleties by which we, those of us even who are saved, can be deceived. He can take any inch of that piece of argument that we believe. And if he pulls it in another direction, he can disguise wrongdoings by good intentions. He can take, you know, good works right, and make it a cloak for wickedness. All of these things is attacking the original word of God. And when we fall off of that, we fall into danger. So is that why, to some people, all churches look the same? Yeah. Hmm. Let, 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 let me see. Too many are not prepared for what Satan is using as schemes, tricks, and traps in this hour. And many are now victims of his strategies. So tonight we need to discover some of Satan's tricks and schemes. I'm going to go through this. I'm going to let y'all elaborate. Number one, he lies and he is the father of lies. John 8, 44, this is the living Bible, perhaps they'll put up the King James Version, for ye are the children of your father, the devil. Listen, who is he talking to? For ye are the children of your father, the devil. And you love to do 
the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning and a hater of truth. There is not an iota of truth in him. When he lies, it is perfectly normal, for he is the father of lie, liars. <laughs> Some people have a demon of lying. So guess what? We just discovered through their DNA who their father is. <laughs> Y'all don't know nobody that's a liar. That's right in church. And a half truth is a whole lie. That's right. And the, and the enemy majors in half truths. That's right. Even when he qu quotes scripture, he quotes half of it, not the full intention That's of it. That's right. And, and even if he does quote the, the whole scripture, it is with ill intent. Mm -hmm. he's, he's not going to give you the context of it. He'll, he'll, he'll quote a scripture. Uh, um, if, if he said, thou shalt not live by bread alone, he don't mean for you to live by God's word. He's going to focus on the bread part. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, like you said, he won't give you but every word that proceed out, out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. But if he gave you all of that, he's going to point you in, the, in another direction of another God. Yeah. He's not talking about the God of heaven. It's like the God that's on the back of our dollar bill. In God we trust. Other gods. Mm -hmm. So he is, he's a liar. And he's the father of liars. So somebody tonight figured out, found out who their daddy is. <laughs> Number two, he blinds the minds of unbelievers. Second Corinthians 4, 3 through 5 says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them. That was verse 4 and 5, I'm sorry. So he blinds unbelievers' mind. That's why, that's why some people, and I hate to say this, but some people will never be saved. Now, is it possible that unbelievers sit right in church? They have a what type form. of form? form of See, I've always been the type of person. Uh, everybody, it's no secret. I'm, 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 I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. Been a Dallas Cowboy fan ever since I was a little boy. Whether they are winning or they're not, I'm still a Dallas Cowboy fan. I'm all in. Some people are here. But they're not here. They have other motives. Sometimes I wonder when I see some people that come to church that haven't been here, they come back, and I don't see them making a concerted effort to get right with God. Why are you here? Are you here to persuade others to come and do what you're doing? Or are you here trying to get right. One thing I found out is somebody can genuinely come and try to get right with God and then they go back and they go back to the same environment or around the same people that perhaps pulled them away from God. You can't do that. That's bad for your health. <laughs> That's bad for your spiritual health. You can come in here. God can touch you. He can deliver you. And you can leave out of here and within a matter of minutes be right back where you were. When, when, when you get out of that environment, if you're, if, you're not, if you're not careful, those strongholds that you were delivered from, they can reappear, if you will, in your life. You got you to gotta separate yourself from the, the thing, the, the, the vice, if you will, that had you in bondage in the first place. For example, if you were um, an alcoholic, then obviously you don't want to go to a bar or somewhere like that where alcohol is present. You, that, that may not be a good look. And even if you're strong enough to withstand it, some things just aren't prudent. In other words, some things you just shouldn't, don't even put yourself in that environment because 
there's a possibility that you may fall back into it. Watch this. You can be as saved as you are, and I can be as saved as I am, but we, not, we might not mix. Absolutely. We gotta stay away from each other. Uh, absolutely. But the, the Bible talks about familiar spirits. Yes, some kind of way. Have you ever noticed some people connect and you don't know why? If you had the opportunity to see like God sees, you would know why they hook up. Familiar spirits have a kindred nature. It's like if I used to be something, Mm. I can see somebody that is either what I used to be or if they're actually doing it now. Mm. Like if I was a gambler, you can tell. It's just something in you that knows that somebody else is a gambler too. Wow. And, and, to, and to that point, um, John 3.19 says, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. And when you find yourself in a pattern of secrecy or dishonesty, I think it was Second Corinthians that you read, it, it was talking about that dishonesty, that it was the uh, dishonesty of their hidden things that caused them to walk in unrighteousness. And when you do not have the light of God, that accountability, right, that can purge you from the necessity to hide. Because typically if you got something to hide, you know, there's something under that layer that you don't want to get uncovered. So sometimes those individuals never get fully committed. They never give their full, you know, information or whatever the case may be. I don't want them in my life like that. Why is that? (laughs) Because there's a part of us, and I'm saying all of us, that desire to compartmentalize our life to hide the stuff we don't want to show. And wherever darkness is, Satan has permission to rule. Gotcha. You know, that's good because the next device that Satan used is he masquerades in costumes of light and righteousness. <laughs> so you're right on cue. That's what people do. Second Corinthians 11 and 14. And no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Some people come in church and uh, if you don't have no discernment, you would think they are the most high. <laughs> you would. I told the mothers on Mother's Day, we had the panel. And one of the questions was, should a mother act in private like she act in public? You remember that? You have sort of same question for saints. Should, should, should saints act like they act in private, like they act in public? So if I was to follow you home, do you still have standards? Mm. So the, Bible, the Bible says that we have, a, we have to have a good report within mm. and without. No matter where we are, our report should be good. It should be the same. It shouldn't change. So your light should, sh- should shine. Darkness. In dark, you can hide. There's certain things you can hide. But if God ever turns on the light switch, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like walking into a surprise birthday party. You don't know it's coming. Mm-hmm. Then that light goes on will scare the life out of you. (laughs) First lady, you have something? I noticed what you were saying as far as people who show that form of godliness like they live in the light. It's almost like when I first came to Christ and um, got saved and I'm thinking everybody was right in the church. And I'm thinking, oh wow, they got positions and, and they were all happy and in the spirit all the time. So I almost ended up following them because I thought they had something. Mm. And so then I realized that I had to step back a little bit. And when I started 
looking at things for what they really were. They weren't who they were. If I had fell into that same category that they were in, I wouldn't be here today. This brings up something to my remembrance. I remember you told me one time you had to go to my father and like, Bishop, forgive me. Yes. Because you were hanging around people who, when you saw them in church, when you saw them in Bishop's presence, it was like, oh yes, everything is, is, is right. I'm, I'm doing the right thing. But behind, in the dark, yes. what were they doing? They were having private meetings mm. with a bunch of the ladies and they were talking about the man of God. Mm. So I'm sitting there, new, mm -hmm. in ministry, and I'm like, wait a minute, y'all in leadership. And y'all talking about the man of God. But because I sat there and never said anything, and I listened, I felt that I had to get to the man of God so it won't enter into my spirit. And so I released myself by going to him and being honest and told him where I was and what I heard because of the simple fact I wanted to be free. If I didn't, I would still probably be sitting in the seat looking at him cross-sided and everything, thinking that what they had said was true. And I'm like, I cannot allow the person who feed my soul That's right. to be talked about to me that I'm gonna be able to hear you. There's no way. Because I would hear more of the lies that was told than the truth that's coming over the pulpit. You know, the reason I brought that up is because I found out today, I found out today that I have some people that smile in my face, but they're saying things to people on the outside about ministry, about me. But they'll, they'll be back. They'll be back when the church open. You'll see them. You'll see them smiling and praising God and everything. But God always has a way to reveal to the man of God to watch your back. And uh, yeah, they, they, they really, they, they and, and, and the thing about it is, they, from what I was told, they stay in contact with old folk and tell them everything that's going on. Let me tell you, let me see, there you go. Let me look at Brother Paul this time. Here at Scripture Cathedral, I ain't got nothing to hide. So if you want to know it, you can drop me a call, you can drop me an email, or you can come by and I'll tell you, yay or nay. I don't have nothing to hide. Don't, and I, and the one thing I, I hate is I hate somebody to do something behind my back, a backbiter. And all I know is to do good. I do, I, I do them good. I treat them with the utmost respect. But you're masquerading around here <laughs> like everything is okay. And I will even go this far to blow your mind. They are one of the officials of this ministry. Pastor, to that, to that point, one of, one of the major deceptions, and I know a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about, you know, could lend anyone to think about how they need to be armed from the outside in. But before anything gets to this point, you gotta arm yourself from the inside out. Meaning, the individuals in the category that you just mentioned, you don't get there overnight. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the biggest danger that can hit any one of us is that, that little deception called self-righteousness. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you know, first remove the plank out of your own eye before you get the speck out of your brother's. And if we don't self-check, like I think First Lady was talking about how just in that moment, before I even start looking about how messed up this situation is, let me check my heart to make sure I do what I need to do to purge myself of this before this thing get a hold of me. And it's very easy for you to come in a sanctuary or a gathering and just say, look at all the problems all these other people have. <laughs> and right there, right there, mm -hmm. you just gave the enemy a foothold. Because mm -hmm. now you're in the position of the accuser now. Wow. And, you're talking about, and you're talking like your daddy. And he ain't in heaven. <laughs> Another sad thing is because of what we're going through right now, it should be a time for you to get yourself right. 
Yeah. Not to start. Um, I mean, that's the enemy job. Yep. Like he was talking about as far as uh, taking the people of God out of the house of God and teaching them more of darkness than it is light. So if, I, if I'm in a place where, of darkness, I end up acting like darkness and I begin to give in to the ways of darkness instead of trying to put myself in a place where I ought to be mainly with God. And then God will show you you're wrong so you can make it right. Let me move on. Number four, he does signs and wonders. This is the Antichrist. Second Corinthians 2 and 9. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie. And then this, see, see, we're talking about the Antichrist, but let's talk about false prophets and, 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 and pastors and, and people in ministry that are perhaps, I, I believe this, the Bible says, gifts come without repentance. Mm-hmm. Some people have gifts. And, 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 and I always was taught, and y'all tell me, y'all... Tell me if I'm wrong, but God will use anybody to get his glory. But when you try to take that glory, that's when you got a problem. Yes, so, it's, go ahead. You know, Pastor D, God is, he used, he used King Nebuchadnezzar to fulfill his will. When his people were out of line, God used them to put their people back in line. The, you, know, this, you know, it's almost like... If, What's the difference between me buying a bottle of bleach and a sinner buying a bottle of bleach? When we use it the right way, it's going to do what it's supposed to do. What, I'm, what, I, what I mean by that, the word of God is the word of God. If somebody believes it, if they believe it, the Bible says that he let it rain on the just and the unjust. And if a, and if a man does not, does not save, he does something good, God will reward that man for the good that he has done. But that don't give him a hall pass. Don't give anybody a hall pass. You know, um, of somebody that's that don't have the Holy Ghost, like in the in the in the when Jesus was dealing with the with the apostles, none of them had the Holy Ghost at the time, but they were able to cast out the devil. Mm-hmm. They were able to heal the sick. They did. They did a, a, a whole lot of things because. If somebody believes in the word, the word is going to do what it's supposed to do. That's it's, right. It's going to work. But that don't mean, but the Bible does, does say this also, but you shall know them by their works. Mm-hmm. That's where the truth come in. Like you said, you got to follow them home. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's a difference between gifts and fruit. And fruit is being lived out in front of you. And, and, and to that point, can't deny the fact that spiritual spiritual gifts or uh, power has two sources. Like the devil can do those things too. Like it's not just somebody who you know can say the say the word, believe in the word, and they go to hell and you got blessed by it. That scenario can happen too. But then in the in the scriptures, Deuteronomy chapter thirteen. If a prophet says anything and the word comes to pass, the word still came to pass. But he said, do not follow them if they teach different than my word. Mm-hmm. The, woman, the woman in the book of Acts who had the spirit of divination, spirit of python, she had another spirit that was not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but she, she had a career of telling fortunes. There is a fortune teller on many routes down here that has been in business for a minute. You don't stay in business for a long time if you don't say stuff that don't come true. So I'm so the devil can have some form of supernatural measure, and the warning is just just because something seems supernatural that is not the assign that is not the okay that it's from God, because the devil can do that too. So just because you got somebody who's saying, "Thus saith the Lord, brother," check who his Lord is mm. before you listen to what his word says. So it sounds like you're saying so. Perhaps, perhaps. Satan can cause things to, to happen to make it look like it's God. Yeah. 
has supernatural wisdom too. Mm. Better than ours. It's not as much as God, but it's better than ours. Oh, wow. A prime example of what we're talking about is First Kings, the 13th chapter. The Lord told this particular prophet, he said, when, I, when you go in this place, he said, don't eat no water, don't drink no food, don't eat any water, and don't eat any food out of this place. Yep. He told him that. He, that was the word, what God told him. All of a sudden, while he was on his journey, he met a, another older man, an older prophet. And the Bible says that this guy told the prophet that the Lord told him mm -hmm. to drink this water and to eat this food. And the Bible says when they sat down to eat, the Bible says that a spirit came upon the, the old prophet and he shook. And then he repeated what the Lord told him not to do. He said, didn't the Lord tell you not to eat any water and not to drink any food, eat any water and eat any food out of, out of this place? And that old prophet that lied to him said this to him. When you leave here, a lion is going to meet you in the way and he's going to eat you because you disobeyed what God told you to do. Now, he, I, and I don't, I cannot, I'm like, Lord, it's like this guy lied to him. But, the, but then the man said, but didn't I tell him not to do this? <laughs> and the same old prophet came back and said, shook. Sure. He was an old prophet. And then this is the part I cannot get over. This old prophet, after he lied to this man, he turned around and said, when I die, I want you to bury me in the same grave next to this man of God. And I'm like, you're the one that killed him. <laughs> you killed the guy. Why in the name of God would you, I mean, I, I would like to wake up from the dead and kick you out the grave. <laughs> I mean, that's the way I feel. But, but you can't, you know, you know, the sad part about it, Pastor D, just like the, the, the statement that you just dealt with, it is, it is a sad situation to see people that will not, that will take other people's word over their own pastor's word. Mm -hmm. That's not good. That's not, you're looking for something different that's not going to happen. You're looking for something that God did not say. You're, you're, you got to listen to whom the Lord placed over you. And if you keep listening to these people, they're going to, they're, they're going to destroy you. And once you, once you destroy something, you can't put it back together. And that's, and that's what's going to happen. Anybody that will not listen to that pastor, and the only thing he's doing is telling you what the Lord said, trying to save your life. But like the Bible says, men love darkness more than they love light. And, 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 the, and as you just said a few minutes ago, Pastor, I'm sorry, you can't save a devil. No. And, and their children, it's tough, to, it's tough to say them too. And it says, unless the light shine on them, unless it, it, it shines on them. And that's, and that's hard to be in friends with people and, you know, you got to check them. <laughs> you know, somebody that's giving you money, giving you a ride, Y'all cool. And sometimes, you know, it, it puts you in a place where you have to compromise your beliefs on your, with your ministry. And it's, it, it's like, it shouldn't be like that. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father and his angels. And that's a tough place to, that's a tough place to be in. Let me move. Number five, Satan tempts people to sin. Second uh, Corinthians eleven three, but I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his uh, suitability, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So Satan will tempt you. Well, I think in some ways we're tempted on a daily basis. Every day we're tempted. Some people don't understand. You know, they think. When you're tempted, it has to be something, uh, no. Tempted every day. Hey, you ever been driving and somebody cut you off? You're tempted to cuss. <laughs> you see some, you see some people like that. You ever heard this saying? Boy, if I wasn't saved. 
Put the Holy Ghost on the shelf for a second. Yeah, put it on the shelf and go back and pick it up later. <laughs> I remember my father used to say, I think it was his mother used to say something like, if I could lay my Holy Ghost down and go do this and come back and pick it up, I'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just to get this off my chest. So Satan tempts us every day. I mean, some people think only young people get tempted. Oh, no. Oh, no. Some people think uh, only lay members get tempted. There are pastors and that get tempted. <laughs> James chapter 1, verse, 13, verse 14. But every man is tempted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Mm. Going back to what, you, what Minister Sean was talking about, whatever you was delivered from, don't let the enemy trick you into thinking, oh, I'm delivered. That's not a problem no more. Listen, he can only tempt you with what you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. He ain't bringing nothing new. And just like Eve was deceived, he had to first put the desire in her to pull her along with that desire. Don't you want to be like God? It was that lust that he drew her away to be enticed. But every, every person is tempted, but you got to come to grips with what you like. What are your desires? What are some of the things that you know are deficits in you? Because those are going to be the hooks that the enemy is going to use to pull you. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, Pastor, that we, we got to do like the Bible says, get a walk circumspectly. So the moment that you are delivered from sin or, or whatever it is, every day you should live your life as if you were just delivered, like today. That way you're not dealing with those things as if um, it cannot trip me up and, or it cannot make me stumble and fall. If I look at it like that, then every day I'm gonna do my very best to live according to what God said and how he says I'm supposed to live. And I won't even, you know, when those things come, I'll be like, nah, this this my first day being saved. I'm not playing with this. <laughs> so, so what we're doing, we're going through some of the devices that Satan uses. Number six, Satan plucks the word of God out of people's hearts and chokes faith. Mark 4 and 14 says, the sower soweth the word. 15 says, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And then if you move on down to 19, it says, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So God, I'm sorry, so Satan can choke your faith. That's why, you know, sometimes, you ever heard people say, well, God, why you let that happen to me? It's sometimes it's testing your faith. Why you let my mama die? Why you let my daddy die? It's testing your faith. It choke you. Some people literally give up over things like that. They lose, look, all this word, all this word you had in your heart. But then when you get to a certain, see, don't ever say what you won't do. First lady, go ahead. I see you. <laughs> because I, I understand when it comes to, uh, say for instance, you, you need a word from God. And you get around certain people and still they're giving you something positive. They give you something negative. And then all of a sudden when um, you're still searching for it and you look for it in the house of God and it's not there, then you go out there and you get something off the street. Mm. And you figure that's going to carry you through and it's not. It's all going to be through the word of God especially if you're rooted and grounded. And the devil, like you said, uh, it's a daily temptation that he has. He's not going to just try you one time. He's going to try you with the same thing the next day, the next day, until you give in. And then if you don't give in on that, he's going to send somebody your way that will show you something a little different. But it's the same thing he's going to tempt you with. Hmm. The devil's like a car salesman. Oh. He'll keep on. Offer, well, I want to say I'm sorry, car salesman, but <laughs> sal salesman, period, because he's going to keep on offering and offering and offering. Okay, package it up this way. We'll give you 9% off. Go on out here and cuss them people out. Or go over here and sleep with this person. Go over here and do that. Do, 
why don't you just leave the church? Why don't you go in and sow a little discord and then run out? Mm. See, you know, to that, that salesman, have you ever went into a store, a car dealer, and you did, you, you made a mistake by giving them your phone number, and they call you, call you, call you. That's why, in some cases, you shouldn't give people in church your phone number. They'll call you and call you and call you, trying to get you to be on their side or whatever. Not only that, don't tell them your past. Oh, no, no, no. You see, then they get to try to learn you and right. use you. That's right. And then the, what they'll start doing is they'll start getting spiritual on you and tell you the Lord said and this and that. And you forgot you told them, but you did. And you'll be like, how did they know that? Because you opened your mouth and told all your business. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> Between you and God. Let me go on. Number seven. Satan causes sickness and disease. Job 2 and 7. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. So he causes that sickness and disease. What do you think is going on with this coronavirus? <laughs> Being orchestrated by the enemy. <laughs> now, I'm going to say this. If one of us that are a believer get it, God had to allow it to happen. You got to understand that. Because I don't believe God would just throw sickness on you. I don't think so. And, and, and I believe, Pastor, if he if he does allow it, it's it's for a purpose. That's right. Um, Lady D always said, and you testify too as well about you know going through sicknesses, and it's so that there is a testimony at the end of it. That's right. That he'll get the glory, and those testimonies can be encouragement to other people that they may not go through the same thing, but when situations like that arise in your life, you have an example because you haven't lived it yet, but. I can say, well, she survived it, or he survived it, and and they said that God brought them through it. So that's that gives me encouragement and faith to believe. Stay in the course with Job. If you, I'm gonna show you why God allows it. Satan, this is one of his devices. Satan accuses Christians before God. Job one and eleven. But what do you think would happen if you reached down and took away everything? that is his. He'd curse you right to your face. That's what. So what he was saying, he, see, God, Satan has to get God's permission to mess with you. My Lord. I'm talking about bona fide Christians. He has to get God's permission to mess with you. And God will give him specific instructions. Yeah, but don't do this. Don't do that. What did he tell him about Job? You can do that, but don't touch his soul. Yes, sir. And you're correct, and I say it all the time. When you come out, everybody's going to know who bought you out. God is going to get the glory for that. Let me give this last one. Satan fights against the laws of ministry. Galatians 5 and 15 through the Amplified Bible. But if you bite and devour one another in bickering and strife, watch out that you, along with your entire fellowship, are not consumed by one another. My Lord. Discord. So discord. Mm -hmm. Smile in your face. Stab you in your back. Discord. You said it. Some people come in and sow it, and then they're gone. Some people will stick around until the rapture set right there and sow discord right in the church. That's their assignment. They have been assigned by those spiritual wickedness and darkness. That's what they're supposed to do. And that stops the anointing because Psalms 133 says that that the anointing comes at the point of unity. Like, where there is unity, there God will command a blessing in the unity of his people. So you're, when you sow discord, you're also preventing 
those healings, those breakthroughs, those, those miracles to happen. Because now if I can't receive from who's feeding me, no matter how good that word is, if I have, if I got a little leaven in my faith, I'm not going to receive it. And I can be sitting there with my infirmity for years because I got something in my heart against the person that's feeding me. Mm. So that's like, for instance, just say you're at home and uh, your mother's cooking, but your father's always saying, don't eat your mother's food. She gonna try to poison you. <laughs> so you something's gonna happen to you. You're gonna be malnutritioned. Yeah. And confused. And confused. Wow. And that's exactly what some people are sitting right in church. They're confused. See, some people, they want you to be just as miserable as they are. Miserable loves company. They will try to pull you right down into their situation. But those people who have that spirit of discernment mm -hmm. should stop that demon before it goes too far instead of entertaining the spirit. That's right. Most of the time when we see certain things and we know it needs to be corrected and we know we have that spirit and we know that we can see what the enemy is trying to do, you have to learn how to stop it before it gets to that point. But see, that's why when you get to a certain place in God in ministry, you got you, you, you got to be able to be friends of people, but you cannot be so friendly that you cannot correct them. I think Elder Johnson said it, if I'm riding home and you talking about my church, I'm going to find another ride. Uh, some, some people get fooled into the conversation and start talking back. Mm -hmm. and, and Pastor, sometimes people will um, have a certain amount of fear, like, okay, find that other ride, but then go back and report it. Just because mm -hmm. you got you to, gotta, like Lady D said, if you want to kill something, you got to expose it. As long as it's hidden, it can, it can continue to do damage. But if you expose that devil, then everybody knows that all eyes are on it. The devil is less likely to, to stir something up when, when he's seen in the light. It's like a burglar. If there's light around your house, he ain't going to rob you. Mm -hmm. But as long as it's dark, undercover, yeah. he can come in and he can, he can tear your house apart. That's why I told you all a couple of weeks ago, I don't understand people that say, Pastor, so-and-so, so, but I ain't going to say who said it. No, you, you got to put them on Front Street mm. and say, listen, I, th I rode home with this person and I don't know why they just started telling me this because sometimes people do that right. just to kind of feel you out to see if you're going to fall into the trap. And, and you say, you know what, this is wrong. And then you go back and let your leadership know and now they don't have no room to operate. Mm. Like he want to suffocate and choke the faith out of us. Mm -hmm. We want to suffocate and choke the devices that he has because one thing's for certain, if they did it to you, they're going to do it to somebody else. That's right. Mike? We got people who, um, a lot of times, people who power trip mm -hmm. are the ones who cause the biggest problems. Mm -hmm. Like, they can be the main ones who will sow discord in ministry or, or what have you, or anything that you decide to do. It's like, I don't want him or her over me. Why? And it, did the pastor tell them this? And then you got people who like to show face in front of the pastor. Mm -hmm. Eye service, right? Yeah, eye service. Yeah, it yeah. says not as men serve men pleasers, but as unto God. But the whole motive is so they can get closer, so that then they can seek, kill, and destroy, just like their father. Mm -hmm. So since we gave the devices, I, I'm going, I know I got to, I usually try to go an hour, but now uh, let's break down this armor. Y'all ready? Right. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Okay, let me move on down. Where, where are we? Um, here we go. 14, stand there for having your loin, loin, loins girt about with truth, the belt of truth. The belt of truth is the first item in our arsenal. A belt holds up the other pieces of clothing and armor together. It secures the outfit and allows a soldier to move freely. Truth both secures us and gives us freedom. 
One of Satan's greatest offensive tactics is to deceive us. Again, he is the father of lies. With the belt of truth around our waist, we are prepared to defend against this. This truth also applies to the way we live our lives. When we live with honesty and integrity, mm -hmm. the other pieces of our armor, what could be considered our spiritual selves, stay in act. A life of integrity is not easily torn asunder. So you got to put on the belt of truth. Let's think about that belt. And I was thinking about the core in the body. Mm. So it's like we have, we have core beliefs, mm -hmm. as believers, and the strongest part of your body should be your core to help keep things intact. Mm -hmm. See, I found out something the other day. I knew it, but I never paid attention to it. They said that your stomach, your digestive system controls a lot of things. You, that's right. So, like you said, the core. You got to make sure the core is strong. That belt. And see, it says it allows you to move freely. So when you're in this fight, you don't have nothing obstructing you from moving. Let me move on. The breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness covers our hearts and other vital organs. In a sense, the breath, breastplate covers the most vulnerable areas of a warrior. <laughs> you, you, you know that if you, if you got on that's why police officers wear bulletproof vests mm -hmm. to protect their heart and the, the, the valuable organs of the body so you got some Christians that's walking around they don't have on the belt they don't have on the breast pla breastplate <laughs> and pastor I think the um one of the things that about the breastplate of righteousness, um, in John 1 and 47, Jesus gave Nathaniel one of the greatest compliments ever in that he said, behold an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. And to have a heart of sincerity, and I think you hit on that two weeks in a row, mm -hmm. to have a heart of sincerity will save you in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. And to have your heart um, to have your heart always remain sincere, rooted in truth, it's very hard to get that person off the way. Mm -hmm. But you got to be sincere in everything that you do. Let's see, number three. Footwear of the readiness of the gospel. Our feet are to be fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Because we know the good news of Christ and by that knowledge experience peace in him. Our feet are willing to move. In obedience to Christ, we will flee temptations and walk into whatever he has called us to do. So you got to have your feet shod. I believe they use the word shod. The preparation of the gospel. That's Jesus. right. And like you were saying and Mr. Sire saying, when your heart is right, where the, if your heart is right, the feet will follow. Because mm. your feet aren't just going to go any old direction. <laughs> your heart has to be in it. And, and when you mean this thing, when you mean the gospel, uh, your heart, and we know it to be the actual, the, the actual mind as well. Mm -hmm. um, when the heart, because they are one, um, then you can move and go wherever the Lord tells you to go. You won't, you won't be like Jonah. You won't run in the opposite direction. Let me move on. Number four, the shield of faith. The shield of faith is used to extinguish all the flaming dots of the evil one. When Satan attacks us, our faith in Christ lessens the blow. We are able to withstand the attack because we know whom we have believed. Mm -hmm. Oh, so none of y'all ever had no darts thrown at you by Satan? Yes, sir. All the time? And mm -hmm. in, in, in darts, meaning in a lot of cases, can mean accusations. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you ain't, you ain't right, you ain't saved, you ain't this, that, and the third. And you got to, your faith has to be ready to always remind the enemy, no, Christ died for that. That's right. Blood covers that. So and you know what that goes back to, right? The cross. There you go. <laughs> it goes back to the cross. And it, see, and it didn't say, it didn't say that, those darts weren't going to hit you. It said it will lessen the blow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. 
The reason why, Saudi, the reason why you played football and you had to put on shoulder pads and a helmet, and in some cases, thigh pads, it was to lessen the blow, but you still got hit. And the thing about it is, just like, just like sometimes you got blindsided. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have on that equipment, it would have messed you up. <laughs> See, that's preaching stuff. <laughs> Let me move on. Number five, you had something to say, Mike? I was going to say, you can also get blindsided if your brother's not covering you. That's right. It's almost a football analogy. You're on the line, and uh, the player's going to the left, and you go to the right. You get somebody hurt. <laughs> Number five, the helmet of salvation. A helmet protects the brain, basically our minds. It is because of salvation that our minds can be sound. We are assured of our eternities, and made righteous recipients of peace, practitioners of faith, and knowers of truth. Our minds are protected because Jesus' work on the cross. We have been given the mind of Christ. A helmet can also serve as a signifier. When the enemy looks at us, he sees that we belong to Christ. We carry with us the seal of the Holy Spirit. When you played football, at Brown University. Brian. Brian. Yes, sir. Oh, see, no, okay, and I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, let him know. You know sorry, <laughs> Ivy League. <laughs> That's my decal. It showed who you played for. Yes, sir. That's my decal. That's right. So when, when Satan sees you, he got to know whose side you're on. And listen, your own man ain't going to tackle you. That's why in sports, Mike, you had home jerseys and away jerseys. Can you imagine when everybody with the same color? I've been to, to, to particular games where another team forgot their jerseys and they both had to wear dark jerseys and the referee would call the game. Yes, sir. I agree. Can't identify. Can't identify. Mm -hmm. That's right. So you got to have on your helmet to protect your mind. See, Satan's going to come after your mind. That's his first thing. He's going to come. Everything is going to go through a mind. That's, that's what we're dealing with, especially right now. Mm -hmm. During this quote-unquote downtime, it is, it is an attack on the mind. He, he, he's systematically wearing individuals down. And if you're, not, if you're not reading, if you're not praying, if you're not fasting, if you're not doing things to edify yourself, uh, because we can't come together, if you're not you know, catching the, the, the Facebook lives and things like that, then you can be mentally worn down and it can have a spiritual effect. He's, he's hitting you naturally, but it's affecting you spiritually. See, listen, before this pandemic, you had your pastor carrying you. You had ministers and certain people carrying you. Now that you're at home by yourself, you better study your playbook. In, in, passive, in Philippians chapter 2, before Paul gave the command to have the mind of Christ, he qualified it by saying, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love. And I think, and, and I've had conversations with people before who've literally admitted, you know, bless them for doing so, of really not being sure if God loved them personally. Wow. And that can weigh heavy. The um, proverb says that the glory of a child is their father. Mm -hmm. And if you're not sure who your dad is, like, and sometimes when we get, when we look at, like, you know, sinful behavior, you, you follow the lifestyle of an orphan. Mm -hmm. Put him at a table. He'll be the first to steal food and put it in his pocket. <laughs> he doesn't know who's going to provide for him. Mm -hmm. There's anxiety, and that's what the enemy uses he presses on the fear or the need of what you don't think you have. Mm. And he causes you to do things prematurely or outside of the will because you don't really know that you're saved. You don't have that confidence to know that's my dad and he loves me mm. personally. Wow. And if you don't have that, it's impossible to add a mind of Christ. 
And you said you have a mind of an orphan. Yeah, the mind of an orphan. You got to do what you got to do to survive. Mm -hmm. mm. Number six, the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. That's why you got to read. Uh, this includes God's written word, the Bible, God's incarnate, incarnate word, Jesus as logos, and God's spoken word, the Holy Spirit within us. The sword is the one offensive weapon in the list. There is power in the word of God. This is why it is our best offense. The only one. Everything else is defensive. This is our offensive weapon. You got to use the Bible against the devil. The devil tried to come and tempt God, and God turned around and used the Bible back on him. It is written. Are you crazy? I'm the one that did this, and you're going to try to tell me? Are you crazy? Got to use that word. That, the, 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 what, that word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Once you get the word in your heart, you won't sin against them. I never forget, I never forget this. My dad used to always tell, some, tell, tell us, he said, get a scripture in your heart if it's just one. See, this is the thing. Have you ever, uh, see, I, I don't know why, ha, have you ever, when you played at George Mason University, have your coach ever ran the same play and they couldn't stop it? <laughs> couldn't stop it. So you can use one scripture, the devil can't stop it. <laughs> can't stop it. For years, for years, they could not stop the triangle offense. <laughs> they couldn't stop it. Let me let me let me finish because most time we stop there with the, the sword of spirit. But number seven, prayer. Prayer is an often forgotten part of the armor of God, but is es it is essential to using the armor of God. Prayer is the way we draw strength from God and rely on Him. In essence, it is what activates the armor. Apart from God and reliance on him through prayer, our efforts in spiritual battle are ultimately futile. My Lord. If you don't pray, what does futile mean? Useless. Useless. So if you don't pray, you can do everything else, but if you don't pray, it's useless. I read the Bible. I go to church, but do you pray? And I, 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 I think your mom, she was here for Mother's Day, and she said, and my mother agreed, people get it mixed up. Some people try to get super spiritual and fall on the floor and put their face. Sometimes you ain't got time to do that. You got to pray while you're driving. Try to close your eyes while you're driving on the beltway. You better be able to say a prayer while you're driving. That's right. You, you, you're exactly right. I seen Jesus. Close your eyes. See the lights. <laughs> oh, but you got to pray. You, you got to pray. If you don't pray, you won't stay. Prayer will fix it every time. There's nothing more powerful than the power of prayer. I think I should talk about that one day, the power of prayer. <laughs> Part two, there you go. The power of prayer. I'm done. But I hope that we enlightened some of our viewers on tonight. The most important part you have to remember is that the devil is going to try you. The devil has devices. He's going to come at you. And, 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 and perhaps some of you wrote down some of the scriptures. Go back over it. Let's get ready. Let go over your playbook. Even if you're not a starter, go over your playbook because you never know when you're going to get in the game. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you got, to, you got to know it. It's nothing like I'm, I put you in the game and tell you to run a play and you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> not prepared. Not prepared. Mm -hmm. Then I have to snatch you out. 
move somebody that e that's not even in that position and put them there. You ever seen a running back play quarterback? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, listen, make sure you put on the whole armor of God. And I think Mike said something. When I, when I, when I read this, I do notice that we don't have, have eyes in the back of our heads. So there has to be other, uh, uh, other believers and Christians on your side yes. to watch out for you. That's why sometimes, have you ever had somebody to come up to you and just give you an encouraging word? Yes. Yeah. Or say, you know what, uh, First Lady, I think you should be careful of so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Got to be careful. Got to have people. I need you and you need me. Everybody ain't trying to kill you. Everybody ain't trying to kill you. There are some good people. There are some good Christians that mean God all the way, mean Jesus all the way. But put on the whole armor. Protect yourself at all times. See, the devil will even try to get you in your dreams. <laughs> Everybody know that. He don't fight fair. That's why you got to pray before you go to bed. <laughs> I guess that's why he said, have your lawyers get about with you, because he'll hit you below the belt, too. That's right. He sure will. Don't he don't care by <laughs> any means necessary. I, I got the, he want, he, see, God's trying to build his kingdom. The devil's trying to build his, too. And I want to sit here today and let you know as the pastor of Scripture Cathedral, he's doing a good job. <laughs> The devil is. He's doing a good job. But he can't outdo God. Can't do it. He will always be below my God. Thank you for viewing us on tonight. And, um, again, on this coming Sunday, there will be drive through prayer. And if anyone needs prayer during that time, you can drive through from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Uh, if you know of anyone that needs prayer, uh, sometimes you got to see the person that's praying for you. <laughs> you can drive through. Uh, we're located at 7610 Central Avenue in Landover, Maryland. Perhaps you cannot get here. Maybe you don't have a ride. Simply pick up your phone and dial this number. You can do this now, 202-483-9400. That's 202-483-9400. And uh, somebody can pray with you and for you if, if you don't get uh, uh, if you get an answering device, uh, go to extension 206 and leave your request right there. Also, let me encourage you to get a bottle of anointing oil. Uh, we've been sending out oil today. We send out a lot of bottles of oil. People understand the principle of the oil. So if you need a bottle of oil, you can also dial the same number, 202-483-9400. That's 202-483-9400. Or you can come by. Uh, the church office, uh, Tuesday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. and get your oil. Um, also, to the church members, again, I'm getting tired of saying this. I need to see y'all, but I love you and I miss you. Um, you never know until something happened, right, how much you miss something. I, I, so I miss you, Scripture Cathedral. Can't wait to see you, and I think it's, it's, it's coming. It's coming. It almost came Sunday, but I, I have to sit down with, uh, with my team, and we have to come up with a plan because some things you still have to do. You still have to social distance. Uh, certain things you can't do or they suggest that you don't do. But I, I just don't know because I know when we get together, I don't know. A praise is going to break out. So, I, 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 and I, I, would, I would dare tell you to hold your praise. Uh, that's not me. I'm going to tell you, 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 you got to praise them. You know, you just have to be innovative the way you praise them. Yeah, distance yourself and praise them. Now, families can praise them together, I think, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, y'all can still praise them together. So, we will see you soon. And don't forget, to, today is Thursday night, and I always take a seed offering on Thursday nights. You know that. So tonight I want everybody to give $13, $13, plant a seed of $13. Every 
one of you, every soul, there's a lot of viewers tonight. I want everybody that's viewing. See, some people, when you start talking about uh, offerings, they click off. <laughs> but, I, yeah, oh, it's offering time. Everything gets quiet. But I want everybody to, to plant a seed of $13. Let me thank, um, I saw her on, online, Aisha Green. She came by today, and she blessed ministry. She came by, and she blessed ministry, and she blessed the man of God. And so some of y'all don't know her, but I know her. And God uses people that understand ministry. And the thing about it is, because she blessed ministry, she's going to be blessed. Yes, so tonight, $13, you can go to uh, our website, uh, uh, scm.church. Let me say it the correct way, www.scm.church. And go to the tab that says online giving, and you can go right there and you can donate whatever you would like. But I'm asking for $13. If you don't have the $13, give $28. <laughs> I use psychology on you and you have to do it in reverse. <laughs> um, but Pastor, I don't have 13 I have 113 Sure, right. you can donate that. Or you can go to our cash app, which is dollar sign SCM Church. Once again, that's dollar sign SCM Church. And again, if you would like to get any of these panel discussions, you can simply call the office. Make sure you have the date of the one that you want. Um, you can dial 202-483-9400. Go to extension 206, and somebody will make sure that you get it. And remember this again. It shall be well, and everything is going to be all right. Peace.